Continuing my talk about the kingdom of God, I want to go through some scriptures of the kingdom of God. But I want to show you just an overview of what Jesus said about the kingdom of God and just deal with just some points that he, he brought out. And I studied this and I, I, I gathered about at least 30 different things. And I'm going to just go through them piece by piece. I'm not going to go in depth. I'll probably take each point from there to keep it in, in small chunks. So I want to go down the list of all the things that I've, I've, I studied what, what came out of, of, the, of the word regarding the kingdom of God. So the first thing is in order to join the kingdom of God, you have to repent of your sins. And it talks about that in Matthew 3, chapter 2, and then uh, Matthew chapter 4, verses 17. Jesus came on the scene saying, look, you need to repent of your sins. So what he's saying is that in order to join God's kingdom, you got to change the way you live and, and what you're doing. So, so there's some things that you're doing. Sin just don't belong in the kingdom of God. OK. The another thing, the second thing is part of the kingdom is given to the needy. It comes with provision. It comes with healing. It comes with um, healing from sicknesses and diseases it heal. It comes with freedom from demonic possession, um, people being paralyzed. Um, if you lost your mind, lunacy, all these different things, the kingdom of God allevi alleviates. He gets rid of all of that. So that's just another point to bring out. And we'll talk about that later on. Number three, the kind of citizens of the kingdom of God are poor in spirit, as Christ mentioned on the, the Beatitudes in, in Matthew chapter five. So they're poor in spirit, meaning that they they kind of downtrodden because of the world is just a hot mess. And so they there's theirs are the kingdom because they've been formatted and they're ready to accept something better. So but those who are chipper and happy about the world and they're full of spirit and they're just happy and they think everything is OK. They, that's they're not. The kingdom is not for them because they think Satan's kingdom is fine. They bought his delusion that. You know, everything is cool. And usually in a, in a different class system, they may have, uh, you know, more resources than other people. And they um, they just may be delusional. They just don't want to believe that the world is the, really the way it is. And so theirs is not the kingdom. But those who have gotten to a place where they see the world for what it is, they're ripe for the kingdom. Other people that are citizens of the kingdom of God, you will know them because they're persecuted for righteousness sake. Part of the kingdom requires righteousness. And so they're living righteous and they're being persecuted for it. Theirs is the kingdom. Anybody that's keeping the commandments of God, if God says do this, they do that. They're walking in the spirit of God. Those people are citizens of the kingdom of God. And those are ultimately who just do the will of God. If you led by the spirit, you do the will of God. You're a citizen of the kingdom of God. So those, those are all the... You want to identify somebody that's a citizen. That is um, one way to, to do it. Um, number four, if the kingdom of God, if the kingdom of God is, is your first priority, all your needs will be met. So um, the Bible says that seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. It doesn't always mean you get everything you want, but you will be taken care of. As God says, um, he's not always about. You know, you just having everything you want and just living the way you and it doesn't always work that way. But the bottom line is that um, if you seek his kingdom first, you will be taken care of. Number five, it says the kingdom has offensive people in it, symbolized as tares. There's a parable where God is talking about wheat and tares. And he's talking about, you know, you know, there's certain people that are you know offensive, that they're part. They're inside the kingdom. And that's what I talked about in my last episode, that. Inside the kingdom of God, there's a kingdom of Satan. So there's a little kingdom of Satan within the kingdom of God. And within that, there's there's terror. There's people who are in the world that's of Satan. And there's people in the world that's of God. And so you got wheat and you got tares as, as described in that parable by Christ. The kingdom of God, number six, the kingdom of God spreads and grows. So it's always growing. People are getting born again. They're becoming saints. They're, they're becoming citizens of the kingdom. And it's always growing. And it's just like some of the examples Christ used, like when you put um, leaven in bread, it rises. Uh, 
little bitty mustard seed is put in the ground and then it grows up to this huge tree. That's how the kingdom of God is. And it's been ever since he came preaching that message, people have been growing and, and the kingdom of God is becoming greater and greater and growing bigger and bigger. So that's just something that he mentions. The kingdom of God is valuable. He has to tell people that because people don't know that. And so he goes through different parables about how a man sold all his stuff just to buy one plot of land because how valuable he is. So he's he's telling people, look, this this thing is way better than what you you currently have. This world system, this kingdom of Satan is way better than that. And so he tries to give people an understanding of that. Number eight, humility is is a part of the citizens of the kingdom of God. So we'll talk about that later. Number nine, forgiveness is part of the citizens of the kingdom of God. People that are a part of the kingdom of God are forgiving. So now we're dealing with morality. We're dealing with um, growth, spiritual growth, maturity. We're dealing with how certain people act. People have decided to remain unmarried for the, to promote the kingdom of God. Matthew 19, 12 talks about that. How some people said, this is so precious to me that I want to spend all my time preaching the gospel, promoting the kingdom. And some of them don't get married because of that. And that's perfectly okay with them if, if God has given them a gift. And number 11, one of the biggest barriers into entering the kingdom is, is the love, the reliance, and the trust in riches. Like I mentioned before, like I said, rich folk probably don't have a problem with the world they're living in. They think it's cool. They don't want the kingdom of God. It's hard for them to understand the concept. They can't enter in because they trust in their riches. They love that more than God or anything else. Not every rich person does that. That's not how every rich person thinks. But he did mention that riches can be a, a hindrance for you. So it's not to say you need to become poor in order to enter the kingdom of God. But he's saying that when riches are on you, it can be a hindrance. It can, it can prevent you from doing it. And, be, and, be, and simply because they, they bring comfort and a lot of things, you can buy a lot of things with money. So, you know, why would you want to kind of give that up? Number 12, another big barrier to uh, the kingdom of God or entering into the kingdom of God is religion. I want to emphasize those two, riches and religion. The two big R's, religion and riches. Religion is a set of rules that man comes up with. He may take someone from the Bible or not, but people tend to get caught up in those rules and regulations and they say, I'm good with God because this is, I got, I got it. I did the work. I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm tithing every Sunday. I'm going to church, whatever the rules they think or what they were told to do. That's the one of a, a big barrier for people from entering the kingdom because a lot of these rules are not in the Bible. God is not requiring you to keep a certain set of rules. He's more about you to yield to his spirit and let him clean you out. You can't really do anything for God for, for him to accept you because you a hot mess. He has to save you 100 percent. You can't give him anything. But people think because I, I, I keep my people, pay my tithes, I go to church every Sunday. I read my Bible three times a week. I pray and I fast. I do these these so-called spiritual chores that somehow that makes me right with God. And they, they miss that this is a relationship, that, that they are hot mess. They can't fix themselves. No amount of activity or works that they, they do can somehow justify them before a holy God. They can't. So religion is a big thing because that's Satan's tool to get you to think you're right with God. And meanwhile, you're on your way to hell. Number 13, most of God's own people the Israelites could care less about the kingdom. And so God shifted his focus to the Gentiles. The kingdom was, was drawn out for the, for the, for the, for the Israelites first, for the Hebrews. And um, this ministry believes that the, the, the so-called black man in America and dispersed across the globe or the earth, rather, is the modern day Hebrew. OK, he's just been uh, hidden from the rest of the world. And God for, for talked about that in the word and uh, so forth. But. Hebrews didn't want it. Jesus came and said, hey, the kingdom of God is for y'all. We don't want that, Jesus. We want, a, we want an earthly kingdom. We want to be free from Roman rule, and we want to have our earthly kingdom and run the show. They wanted to go back to Solomon's days when they had a big temple and they had all the money, and they were kind of running it, you know, doing their thing. No, that's not the kingdom he's talking about. You ain't got that no more. 
And so they rejected Christ because they wanted something on a physical plane. He's like, look, man, I'm, I'm trying to change your soul so you can fit into a spiritual heavenly kingdom where eventually we'll be physical as well. You know, the, you know, the, there'll be a rain on earth and everything like that. So it is going to be physical where God is running the show on earth. But he was trying to change the hearts. They didn't want that. So they're the first people and the most stubborn people, his own people that he chose initially to save and be a light to the rest of the world. They rejected that. They rejected it. And, and to this day, because of their rejection, they're under the curses of, of God, as, as mentioned in Deuteronomy 28. And we all have to bear it. They rejected Christ on top of that and killed him. So it's, it's really bad. I mean, one thing, just to reject the message, but then you're going to kill Christ. That's just really terrible. And who killed them? The religious leaders. The religion is so terrible. It's so terrible to the point that you're going to kill righteous folk. That's, that's why religion is such a barrier to the kingdom of God. You have to get rid of religion. Anybody who's come out the church system or been in church for any period of time. I was in there for seven years. Prior to that, me and the Jehovah's Witness, my parents, and I was just going along as a, as a kid. I was in that for probably from the age of five to about 15, 16. So that, that was, that's about 10 years or so, 10, 11 years. So I'm in religion 10, 11 years, plus the seven years in Christianity, quote unquote. So that's about 17 years. I got to rethink everything now. What it means is I got to hit the reset button. I got to take the word. I got to go to God and be cleansed. I got to look at the Bible from a fresh perspective. I got to remove all the filters. I got to go from just go back to zero and say, God, teach me. And a lot of people have to do that because religion will mess you up and won't allow you to enter the kingdom of God because you got all these things on your, your filters on your mind, things in your way that won't allow you to understand the kingdom and, and, and accept the way it, it's ran and, and fit into it. So I digress in that, but I had to say these things. Um, number 14, many are called, but few are chosen. Matthew chapter 22, verses 14. What that says is God wants a lot of people. He's calling them, you know, but when they show up, they ain't ready. So he can't choose them. I can't, I can't bring you in, man. I want a lot. I want everybody, but I can't choose you because you ain't, you're not worth you, you. You, you're not right. And we'll talk about what, how to be right and how to be acceptable to God and all that kind of stuff. As I mentioned before, number 15, the gospel or the good news is the message of the kingdom of God. So if you're not preaching the kingdom of God to people, a new way of living, a new ruler, a new world order, because that's what it is. Now, you know, the Illuminati, whoever you want to call these people running the show, they talking about a new world order. They're going to change the world under something different. God's doing the same thing. He's changing the world. It's going to be a new world order under Christ, a new world order under Christ. And so if you're not preaching an entire world that's changed and under Christ, then you're not preaching the gospel. Because that ain't the, this, this gives you more understanding into what the gospel is if you understand the kingdom. And so... Anybody that's that's have the evangelistic gift, if you've been given that and you, you're out there with signs and you got T-shirts on and you're going around preaching the gospel. Hopefully, as you listen to this series and as you study the scriptures for yourself, you can understand the kingdom and, and relate what it really is to people. Because a lot of people just go out and they just talk about, well, you know, Jesus forgave you for your sins and everything's cool and you're going to heaven and not not talking about. No, he's he change, he's he wants to change you to fit into something different. So number 17, the 10 virgins is a parable about the 10 virgins in Matthew chapter 25, verses one and with chapter 25, rather the 10 virgins. Um, some people are ready for Christ's return, having the Holy Spirit, while others are not. And that's what the parable is about. If you've been chosen to be a part of the kingdom, if you elected, as we'll talk about later on, you got to you got to be ready. So it just it's not just, oh, God chose me. I'm saved. I'm born again. Great. But you still got to be ready and you still got to be be ready when he whether or not you, you know, you see him when he comes down physically or when you die and, and you stand before him. You have to be ready in your lifetime. And so the, ten, the, the parable of the ten virgins is about girls that was just tripping. They was kind of waiting around and they, they didn't really have a plan and they wasn't diligent about Christ's return. They wasn't serious about it. They didn't keep their lamps 
lit. And then he tried to borrow some 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 lamp, some lamp oil from the women that was ready. They said, no, we ain't got we ain't gonna have none for us. So oftentimes oil in the Bible is is a kind of a description or a representation of the Holy Spirit. And so, you know, some people want to be a part of the kingdom, but they don't have the Holy Spirit. They haven't been diligent about staying in the spirit of God. And so they end up naked, unawares, and Christ has just popped up and they ain't ready. And they talking about well, some, can somebody and they can't nobody give you nothing because you got to be ready. This is a personal thing. You can't enter the kingdom with somebody else. They can't get you in. They can't speak on your behalf. Your grandma can't pray you in. You have to be ready for yourself. And the Holy Spirit will get you ready if you stay with him. Number 18, the parable of the talents. Uh, the kingdom of citizens are workers who must bring a return on God's investment. So while we are while we become citizens of the kingdom of God, we ain't just, oh, I'm a citizen. I ain't doing nothing. No, he's given you responsibilities, things to do. I've seen through my studies that it's either you evangelistic or you're you're either bringing in people or you're helping those who already came in. One of the two or both. And there's all these different gifts that God gives men and women within the body of Christ to do his work. So if you're not fulfilling the, you know, the call of God in your life, you're not going to make it in because he wants a return on his investment. He didn't save you just to just have you in there. He wants to use you as well. You're a part of his kingdom. You got work to do. So find out what that work is and, and allow him to to um, use you to do it. Number 19, um, do whatever it takes to enter in the kingdom. It's all about morality. Matthew, Mark, I mean, Mark chapter 9, verse 47 talks about that. We'll break that down later on. Number 20, the kingdom is for the elect. Only they can see it. Luke chapter 8, verses 10 talks about that. And so, and, and out of the elect, some will make it in and some won't. There's a parable about the seed and the sower that talks about that. So what God does is he looks down into time he looks down into the world and he says okay some of these people gonna gonna accept me some of them not some of the people too corrupt to even ever accept me they don't want to deal with me They're too corrupt they decided they just don't want me i can't deal with them okay but there's some i can work with that right there that apple there i can eat i can probably shave off some of the, the edges i can eat that there's another apple that's been polluted with worms it has a hot mess and then i can do with that but this is a person over here I can use. That's how God looks at things. We'll deal with that a little bit. And he pulls people out of the world. He says, you're elected. Okay, now that person has to now walk with the Lord until the end, allowing him to clean them out, her out, and make it in. Now he's going to do the work. They just got to stay with him. And so there are elect people, and then there are people who are not elected. And they're just going to heal and that's the it because they chose that in their life. And God said, I ain't, I'm not dealing with you. And, 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 you know, it's not that God didn't want to save them. They just chose not to do it. And they've caused themselves to be cut off from him because of their decisions. You know, he don't want to just say, I'm going to pick certain. He don't have no favoritism. He want to save everybody. But some people through activity in their life, through behavior in their life, through dis decisions and choices in their life, have caused themselves to the point where they're just not going to be accepted. And guys, I ain't dealing with you. And it's, it's clearly said, Jesus is praying for certain people. He's not praying for everybody. He's praying for the saints, the Pope, the people that God gave him. <laughs> we'll dig into that scripture later on. Initially, he's praying for his immediate disciples and his apostles. Then he prays for those in the world that's to come. So he's only dealing with those God that, you know, elected and brought to him. And, um, and that's a great thing that Christ to be praying for you. So if you believe you're elected, great. Jesus is praying for you. And he wants to see you succeed. For those who are not elected, it's not too late to be born again. I think that, you know, if if your heart is turned towards God, you can be saved. So anybody can be saved if they if they if they want to. But I want to be clear that they are electing those who are not elected. And it's because of their own decision. It's not like God just said, I don't like so-and-so, so I'm not going to pick them. No, they did something to prevent God from dealing with them. They polluted their souls through sin and through their own personal choices to the point of no return. That's what scripture teaches us, you know, and it's sad. But this is what people do. And they made that decision. And when they stand before God, God going to say, remember when you I came to you about this and you said no. 
and and you said no. I'm, I'm like, okay. And I looked at your soul, and you just you didn't want me, so I couldn't deal with you. Um, another, uh, I digress again, but here we go. Number twenty one. The kingdom is more important than the affairs of those who are perishing. So there's a guy that was hanging around Jesus, and he's like, okay, Jesus, I'll follow you, but I gotta, I gotta bury my dad first. He said, let the dead bury the dead. That's not important, you know. What the guy was doing, it was not that that guy, that Jesus ain't down with funerals. He's, he's, you know, he's not, that's not what he's saying. He, he, the, the thing is, the man had made that more of a priority. His family and handling that business more than following Christ. And Christ was saying, no, you got to make this the priority. So there's a lot of things that we, we tend to put above Christ that we need to just drop and make sure the kingdom goes first. 22, stay focused on the kingdom. Luke chapter 9, verses 62 talks about that. He says, those who continue to get distracted are not fit for it. In other words, he said that you start working and then you turn around and you stop working and you start, you're not fit for the kingdom. You got to keep going. And just keep going and stay stay in the kingdom and keep going. If you fall, get back up. Just keep going. But don't, you know, just decide you're not going to do this because you ain't fit for it then. And this is, once again, it's telling us that those are there are people that elect. It's just just because you you got born, it doesn't mean you're going to make it into heaven. He's clearly saying that. So just be glad you saved, but also understand that you need the Holy Spirit to continue on to make it in. You know, this ain't no... Oh, I'm straight. I'm good with God. I'm going to make it. No, you're going to make it if you stay with Christ. You can't just rest and say that somehow this is going to automatically happen. No, you got to yield to Christ on a daily basis. And that's what this whole website is about and what I talk about and how the Holy Spirit helps you to do all of that. He prepares you for Christ and eternal life. And if you stay with him and yield to him, that's our only real work is yielding to the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Waking up and saying, I'm weak. I can't do what he's calling me to do. I need the spirit of God to give me power to do it. Number 24, well, 23 talks about the same thing. God wants to give the kingdom to his chosen people. So we talked about the elect and all that kind of stuff. And he wants to give it to us. And so he says that he picked you. You're a good candidate. You seem to make some decisions that seem to be righteous. It doesn't mean that you're righteous, but you seem to just say, you know what, I'm gonna do the right thing instead of the wrong thing. That's kind of how you got picked. Because you chose to do the right thing in your life. There are certain people who have a con. Everybody has a conscience. And they just say, you know, I'm going to do the right thing. They keep doing stuff like that. God looks at them. You know what? You kind of like me. You got a conscience. You could do the wrong thing, but you did the right thing. Because of that, I'm going to choose you. You still wicked. You still corrupt. Just because you got to look good and you don't mean you all good. So I'm going to fix you and, and clean you up the rest of the way. But you got to stick with me. That's what he's saying. If you stick with me. I'm going to clean you up to be perfected and I'm, you know, and you're going to make it in with me. You're going to be in heaven with me for all eternity and we're going to kick it and have a good time. That's what it's, that's what it's about. Now, number 24, um, the kingdom of God is within us, as the Bible says, it pertain, and that means it's pertaining to the Holy Spirit. So the system, the God, how God reigns, his, his way of doing things, his rule, his, his way of life is in us. You know, once you get born again and get, get the spirit of God in you, the kingdom of God is in you. So you may be, you know, physically walking around in the kingdom of Satan, but the kingdom of God is in you and you're a member of the kingdom of God. It's a mindset. You know, we think differently than the rest of the other people in the kingdom of Satan. We just we don't think like them. And so you'll see that happen once, you know, you, you become more into the mature and growing. You just the way you think is just not the way. The rest of the, of the world thinks because they're of a different another kingdom. Number 25, those those that are dedicated to the kingdom will receive more rewards. So the more you're dedicated, the more you allow God to use you and do things through you, the more rewards you will receive. And that that's in Luke chapter 18, verses 29 through 30. Number 26, the kingdom is here spiritually and is coming physically. So as I said before, he may be sitting on the earth and it's going to be here when he changed. He's going to actually change the earth. But right now it's here spiritually. It's like I said, it's in your mind. It's how you think. It's what you're a part of on a spiritual level. But it's coming physically when he's going to destroy this, this physical world and build a new one. His reign with Jesus physically there. And that's what's coming. 
as I said before, the kingdom is a mindset. It, it's the infilling of the spirit of God. And it's, it's a rebirth as the evidence. So, you you know, you, the way you live, you re, you're repenting of sin, you you know, different things like that. Those are all evidence of, of that. And we'll talk about that. Number 27, tribulation comes on those who are kingdom citizens. So why is my life messed up? Why is this happening? This is Acts chapter 14, verse 22. We can't get away from that. This is part of the being a citizen of the kingdom of God. Once you join. Uh, and so when I said you want a better life, I meant that because there is a better life internally, but externally you may be homeless. You may have co-workers bothering you and mistreating you. You may go to church and be mistreated by people at church. Your world and, and what you're dealing with will be adverse with you and you will have trouble and tribulation. You will be persecuted and mistreated. Why? Because you're in a kingdom of God, but everybody else is in the kingdom of Satan. So the kingdom of Satan is adverse with the kingdom of God. It's a war going on. They don't like God and, and, and we don't like Satan. So it's going to be an adverse thing. So if you're a part of the kingdom of God, you're going to be mistreated, bothered. You're going to have tribulation. Things happen to you. Some of which is God is allowing to grow you and to strengthen you and to empower you going forward. So but it's all to this is you can't get away from that. So anybody tells you, you know, everything's going to be great once you say they lying, and they don't know anything about the kingdom of God. They're not citizens. There's somebody who been, you know, they're just lying to you. Because that's not what scripture teaches. Number 28, the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Whether you're born again or not, practicing sin, unrighteousness, doing the wrong things. Just, you know, if, if right is right and you just say, I'm going to do the wrong thing. Well, practicing that continually will get you tossed into hell. You're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. These scriptures, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10, it says, you know, the fornicator, the homosexual, the uh, idolater, they go down a list and there's just multiple scriptures that talk about. They just have a list of stuff that you're doing. They're not going to hear the kingdom of God. These scriptures were written to churches, people who are filled with people that were born again. They weren't talking to people that weren't saved. They were talking to saints. So he's telling us, look, you got born again. I elected you. I found you. I realized there was some good that I could salvage and that I could make you into something better. But if you decide you know you're gonna take your own liberty and decide that you're just gonna practice sin and do what you want to do you're not going to inherit the kingdom of god so these fake christians who tell you you want to save always save you continue continue to practice sin and somehow god's still fine with you he still he, the scriptures are clear he's talking to you you're not going to inherit the kingdom of god so let's stop with this the kingdom of heaven is a lot different from the kingdom of satan look the reason why this world is so jacked up is because of sin. So why is it that God will allow you to be in his kingdom with sin? So you can't listen to these, 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 some of these doctrines of once saved, always saved. And these Baptist so-called denominations and things of that nature that teach you that God, you know, understands that you a hot mess. And he just, he cool with that. He just, just believe and somehow, no, he wants to change that behavior from the core. Otherwise, you're not going to make it in. Your mind needs to be changed. If that's wrong and arrogance is wrong, sin is, you know, lying is wrong. These things, you got to get to a place where that's wrong and you understand it's wrong and you stop doing it. And God's spirit works in you to cleanse you out and change you. But if you believe the lies of some of these preachers that teaches you that you are right with God, even if you practice in sin, you will not inherit the kingdom of God as scriptures teach. Number twenty nine. God has brought us into his kingdom through his grace. It's nothing we did. It was his grace that did it. Other scriptures talk about his love because he loves his people. He want to bring them into the kingdom. He, he wants you to be a part of his, of his great world where he's in, in charge. Everybody's happy. Everybody's joyous. Everything is great. He's a good God. This is what he wants for us. But he did it through grace. We didn't deserve it. We, we're a hot mess. We were corrupted by Satan's nature. We grew up. We made bad decisions. We, we made decisions. We were rebellious by nature. We did our own thing and we chose to do those things. We have a conscience that says right is right and wrong is wrong. We know what's right and wrong. We decide I'm going to do the wrong thing. We did those things. Some of us more than others to the point that we can't even be elected. But for those who have been elected, we still does the wrong. We ain't no better than nobody else. 
We just chose to do a few things that were correct. And God said, you know what? I'm going to pick you and clean you up the rest of the way because you're salvageable. But at the end of the day, it's by God's grace that that happened. And I have to be clear about that. There is something we did because the other portion of the scripture says that it's by grace through faith that you're saved. So it's God's grace plus our faith. So we believe in God. That's it. You know, God, hey, I believe. OK. And I obey. OK. See, faith leads to obedience. So because you, you know, I'm a, I am I believe God and do what he says, that along with his grace is what saves us. So we, there is some part that we play in it, but ultimately he 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 extended his hand first and, and, and got us. And so it's nothing like I deserve anything from God. No, we don't deserve anything from God. None of us do. We all deserve hell. He could potentially just scrap every all his creation, just start afresh and do something different. But no, he wants to salvage them. He wants to save those who want to live for him and discard the rest. And that's what he's doing. Number 30, suffering is, is in the kingdom of God. Like I mentioned, tribulation, there's going to be suffering. Um, some suffering is required to grow us into God wants us to do. So wants us to be rather. So there's things in us that we need to go through tribulation and suffering that will change us to be calibrated to fit into the kingdom of God. So it's just part of it. And so for anybody that says you don't have to suffer, kind of makes it seem as if everything is peachy clean. You don't really have to deal with anything. Suffering from God is usually done to create character and, and to, to strengthen us and change us. And it's hard. It hurts. But he's trying to clean out what's in us. And that's kind of how it is. I mean, when you go through surgery and there's some tumors in your soul, that's going to hurt when you take it out. But he's just cleaning you out. We have to look at it like that. But a lot of us don't want suffering, and, and that's understandable. But once we understand that God is doing something where he's um, changing us, then we have to go through that, and we have to accept that and understand that that's, that's for our good. Number 31, the kingdom is about righteousness, as I started at the beginning. Righteousness and holiness is about righteousness and holiness and, and, and service to God. So... You have to learn righteousness. We've been taught in, in the world what's right and wrong, but that's from Satan's perspective and what he puts out. Then there's, there's what God says right and wrong. And we, over time, as, as we study the word of God, the Bible, we see what's right and what's wrong. And so the more we study the Bible, the more we know, hey, that ain't right. Hey, that's wrong. And God don't like that. And, and his spirit works in us to, to change us and how we live. So... Those are 31 different points about the kingdom. Like I said, it's it's, it's a lot to take in, but it's I'm going to break down each piece. I kind of went into some of them, but the thing, the main thing I want you to, to understand from this is just the two big barriers to, to the kingdom, religion and riches. And I'm not saying it's wrong to have a lot of money and, and things of that nature, but it can be a barrier. And religion is the biggest one. You know, I would think probably more rich people are getting there versus religious people, you know, so you can be poor and religious and just not get in because you, you caught up with so many things in your mind that make you think you're all right with God when it's not true. You know, so we need to heed what Christ is teaching us in his word. And these are just scriptures that I pulled out. I just did a, a search for the kingdom. A keyword search in the kingdom, pulled out all the scriptures and read them in context and just pulled out what Christ was saying. And you can do the same thing and see that what is being taught in mainstream, quote unquote, Christianity is not what Christ taught when he was on, on earth. So we need to understand the kingdom for what it really is. And we'll, we'll dig into more as we go forward.